This week on The Watchmen. From the Western Wall in Jerusalem to a prayer wall in Southern California, see how the miracle of Israel is blessing the world and changing lives. I'm all in. I'm all in because I, as a Christian, it's my responsibility to love what God loves. And God loves Israel and he loves the Jewish people. Plus, how supporting Israel is helping to shape one millennial Christian leader's unique calling. It's The Watchmen. It's Christians United for Israel only on TBN. And welcome to The Watchman from TBN's Jerusalem studio, one of the best views you will get of the holy city, I can guarantee you. Well, folks, this is a very exciting time to be here in Israel. It's an exciting time for the people of Israel and for the Jewish people around the world because we are in the midst of the high holidays. Now, we just passed Rosh Hashanah, the Jewish New Year. Now we're moving into Yom Kippur, the solemn Day of Atonement. In a little bit, we'll also be hitting the festivals, in particular, the Feast of Tabernacles, also known as Sukkot. So a very significant, important, and exciting time here in Israel in particular. You can feel the energy here in the streets of Jerusalem. But since we are entering a new year, Rosh Hashanah means a new year for the Jewish people on the Jewish calendar, I wanted to take a quick look back at the past year and some of the hardships and difficulties Israel has experienced. Number one, the Iranian regime continues to drive for a nuclear weapon and folks, even worse, the West is basically handing the Iranians the bomb. Look no further than the $400 million ransom that the United States paid to the Iranian regime back in January 2016 in order to obtain the release of some American prisoners there. This was a ransom, folks. Make no mistake about it. And the Iranian regime is now emboldened and empowered even further. So we have a situation where the West, yes, led by the United States, is paving the way in many cases for Iran to become stronger here in the Middle East and to further threaten Israel. So that's a major problem right there. Then we have Israel's bloody borders, the immediate threats. Look no further than the Golan Heights where we've spent time here on the Watchmen Show, where you have ISIS, Al-Qaeda, Iran, Hezbollah, Vladimir Putin's Russia, all of the world's worst actors essentially gathered in one place right on Israel's northern doorstep. Of course, we have Gaza to my south right now where Hamas, the terror army there, lives, breathes, and rules. We have the Sinai Peninsula also to Israel's south where ISIS has a growing presence. So we have Israel with bloody borders. We have anti-Semitism growing around the world. Look at a place like France, the largest Jewish population in Europe. And now many of the Jews in France are being forced to flee because of rampant anti-Semitism there, attacks on Jews, attacks on synagogues. Now, thankfully, many are coming here to their ancestral homeland, the land of Israel. But again, this is a troubling trend and a harbinger, I fear, for things to come in Europe. So the threats are very real and they are very serious. But God Almighty, the God of Israel, says in the book of Isaiah that we are to comfort the people of Israel. Folks, that's where you and I and Christians United for Israel come in. We are America's largest pro-Israel organization with over 3.1 million members and growing every day. This is a movement that's sweeping across America where followers of Jesus are standing with the people of Israel and the Jewish people for such a time as this. You need to be a part of this movement. You see the information on your screen right now. It's a movement that I believe can change the world. It's a movement that I know has changed my life. The Bible says those who bless Israel will be blessed. Those who curse Israel will be cursed. Well, folks, look where I am standing right now. I have been blessed, I can say it freely, because I have blessed Israel. And another person who has been blessed in profound ways is Pastor Jay Bailey. He's Kufi's Georgia State Director. He's also lead pastor of a great church in Midland, Georgia called Solid Rock. 
and he joined us recently to talk about how Kufi and Israel have touched and changed his life. Take a look. I've always had a love uh, for Israel and the Jewish people. Didn't fully understand all that it meant. And really, biblical knowledge and the dangers that Israel experiences, the persecution, the rise of anti-Semitism, only fueled and empowered my passion and my conviction. And I'm all in. I'm all in because I, as a Christian, it's my responsibility to love what God loves. And God loves Israel and he loves the Jewish people. Over the past six years, um, it's grown. Our involvement, our, our commitment has has really increased as our people have taken a greater stakeholder position in standing with Israel and the Jewish people. Um, every year we do a night to honor Israel. A few times throughout the year we will do a, a standing with Israel event and we'll invite our, our local synagogues to come and share and we will do an event that will build and foster the relationship and the trust. And what I've come to understand is that any time God's people get together in the Jewish community, in the Christian community, there's a special favor of God that is released on it. And he takes care of the things that we can't take care of. And he blesses the things that uh, we offer to him in humility. And even sometimes in our own frailties and ignorance, we say, Lord, we're doing our best. Please help us and bless it in spite of us. As human beings, we're sensual people in that we interpret the the world around us through our ears, our eyes, our smell, our taste, our touch. And when we go to Israel, we sense it. We experience it. It's not just intellectual, it's sensual. And that we take it all in and it impacts us in, in deeply personal and spiritual ways. Everyone in Israel at the age of 18 is, is conscripted. They have to serve in the military, in the preservation of their life and culture and the defense of their nation. And that was, was stunning to me and it was impactful for me because they realized that there was something bigger than themselves, their own aspirations. And that was to defend their, their families and their people and their way of life. And when I looked at that and saw these young men and women, knowing that they were putting their lives on the line, wow. Um, that really was a catalyst for me to understand what is really at stake in Israel's fight against barbarism and wickedness and evil. And if they're gonna put their lives on the line, then the least that I can do, individual as a leader of a church, is to mobilize our people. Uh, to give their very best, to help come alongside. So Israel and, and those young soldiers are not alone. That to me was, was uh, deeply stirring. It's profoundly humbling to, to see the hearts and the spirits of Israelis, even while they're facing incoming rockets, the way they go about their lives and the way that they're able to really manage and calibrate those threats is inspiring, it's challenging, it's a remarkable people. And I left there with a new resolve and a new admiration for Israelis and the Jewish people. These past six years in my involvement with Christians United for Israel has been one of the greatest experiences of my life. To be a part of a move of God that is sweeping a nation where people are finally getting why we need to stand with Israel. And I would just want to share with the, the viewing audience that if they're not a part of Christians United for Israel, uh, come join us because it is great, it's powerful, and our voices linked together uh, is making a difference. And I'm so grateful to be a part of this incredible move of God called Christians United for Israel. You know, Pastor Jay Bailey is an amazing guy and he is an integral part of our movement here at Christians United for Israel. There's another exciting movement, by the way, happening right now in Southern California. It's called the Prayer Wall Movement. Now it takes its inspiration from the Western Wall, which is over my shoulder there at the Temple Mount, but it is in Anaheim, California, and miracles are happening at this prayer wall. You won't wanna miss this. That's coming up after the break. It's the Watchmen, it's Christians United for Israel, only right here 
on TBN. Stick around. The Bible is clear. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob made an everlasting covenant with the land and the people of Israel. They are the apple of his eye. But Israel faces enemies on all sides who want to annihilate every Jewish man, woman, and child. God gave us a voice and a responsibility, a biblical mandate to bless Israel and to speak up for Zion's sake. Find out how when you order my free book, Why Christians Should Support Israel. You'll learn why Israel has a biblical and historic claim to the land, why Christians owe the Jewish people a spiritual debt, what the Bible says about those who bless and curse the Jewish people. There's no time to lose. Call Christians United for Israel at the number on your screen or go to cufi.org slash book and we'll send you your free book from Pastor John Hagee. If you won't speak up for Israel, who will? And welcome back to the Watchmen from TBN's Jerusalem studio. Well, Israel is a place of miracles. Jerusalem is a place of miracles, and the Western Wall, the Kotel, is absolutely a place of miracles. And one church far away in Southern California has taken notice. Influence Church in Anaheim, California, has started a prayer wall, and they are having miraculous results. My good friends, Pastors Phil and Tammy Hotzenpiller, sat down with us recently to talk about how God is moving through the prayer wall at their church and how they hope it spreads to churches around the country and becomes a movement. Take a look at some of the amazing miracles that are happening at Influence Church. go back to Israel in, in our mind for a moment, the prayer wall movement began there. We believe this is a movement. This is more than, than a church that has a wall. We believe that God is igniting prayer during these last days. Part of my journey started with Mark Batterson and reading The Circle Maker. And I love the fact that he began to pray around his city. So when we birthed this church under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, we began just praying around our community. When we got the building, we began to walk through it and there was such a sense of prayer. We anointed the doors, we anointed every part of this building. And my mind immediately went back to being in Israel. And when I was at the prayer wall in Israel and, and put a slip of paper, and when we had really be believed God for prayer, and we knew that God wanted us to put a prayer wall in this building. And we thought one thing that would really be exciting would be if we could leave the prayer request in the wall. We didn't realize how fast they would accumulate because people like to go back and revisit the, the spot where they put the prayer. I mean, if you move them, they know it. And so we take them out, we record them, we put them back into the wall so that people always know their prayer requests are there. So now uh, there's somewhere around 18,000 prayer requests in this wall in two years. We have so many stories of cancer that have been healed almost every week. And I'm talking stage four, doctor saying go home and prepare yourself to say goodbye to your family. We have people now coming to this wall specifically, putting prayer requests in the wall. And as you can see at the wall, it says prayer wall, expect a miracle. My husband and I, um, have always wanted to have a family. Uh, our heart was to definitely have multiple children. And so we just started trying like any other couple, you know, normally does. And a year went by and we didn't get pregnant. And then year two went by and we didn't get pregnant. And we started getting very, obviously very scared, very fearful and um, really nervous. So we started seeing doctors. When you're going through what they call unexplained infertility as a woman, it brings so much shame and um, I don't know if the word is embarrassment, but just shame and like, what's wrong with me? We had a women's luncheon here at the church and when I was here that day, it was May, the beginning of May, May 7th, I said, I've got to put my prayer request into the prayer wall and I can't leave without doing that. That day I wrote an extensive prayer out to the Lord and um, we had also been asking after being very quiet about our journey, we started asking everyone in our life, like Phil and Tammy, like the other pastors and friends and family in our life to start praying for us and believing with us for a miracle. Two weeks later, lo and behold, um, a miracle happened. We conceived May 19th. Um, we had no idea, obviously. <laughs> um, there was a little angel growing in my womb. It 
really all started uh, when I was going in for a dental cleaning and my dentist noticed on my, on my head um, a lot of these dark uh, black, almost like a Sharpie colored spots on my head. And he said, oh, you should probably get that checked out. She called and said, well, um, the uh, biopsy has come back and it's, it's melanoma. So we want you to get in to see our specialist right away. And we get there and the specialist there uh, told me, well, um, we do agree it's cancer, uh, but we think it's non-surgical. We think it's stage 4B, aggressive growth, and we give you four months to live. I immediately called Pastor Phil um, and said, hey, you know, we've got this issue going on um, and I need a lot of help. He immediately prayed with me over the phone. Um, the prayer wall had just started. It, it was one of the early prayers I was put on the wall. During treatment, the cancer kept shrinking, and it got to the point that of these 16 tumors, five of them completely disappeared. The ones that remained had shrunk to the point that they could remove them in an outpatient procedure. What they found when they removed those tumors is in every single tumor, not only was the cancer completely gone, but in its place were these um, hyperactivated white blood cells, which they called cancer warrior cells or immunocytes. And they had never seen such high concentrations ever in every single tumor. One of the things we've tried to do is only tell the stories that are medically verified. That way we eliminate the skeptic from the scene. When we hear doctors say, this is what happened, that's what I call a medically verified. We had a friend that had diagnosed a melanoma stage four. So we all started getting our moles checked. I thought, well, let's take my daughter since she's so fair and has moles. So I took her to the doctor and she has moles on her, on her scalp, but she was three and a half years old. Nobody would ever think these moles of anything. So the doctor saw, examined her whole body and then questioned some moles on her scalp. And he said, oh, when he said that, I'm like, what do you mean, oh? He goes, these look atypical. These look abnormal. And I'm like, well, what are we gonna do? He goes, we're gonna um, do a biopsy right now. So she had melanoma. As a mother, when they get told their daughter has cancer, it is the hardest thing in the world. So again, I came to this wall. We prayed, I prayed with the church. I waited about two to three weeks, the results came that she is cancer free, that all the margins were clear. So I've been, she, we were blessed. And I think Eric, for, for the listeners who are watching your show, and most of them are Christians, we've become stale in our faith. And God's got to activate our faith. Something has to happen in these last days where we as believers are believers. We believe in the supernatural realm of a holy God in an open heaven that wants to do the supernatural. So I would ask those listening, what does God want to do in their life? What are you believing God for? Are you expecting a miracle? Folks, as you can see, what's happening here in Israel is touching lives. It's touching hearts. And after the break, we're going to visit with one millennial Christian leader who visited this great land and now has made it a part of her incredible mission. It's the Watchman. It's Kufi, only right here on TBN. Don't move. Israel's enemies are united in their goal to destroy the Jewish state. They all share one purpose, to wipe Israel off the map. Evil forces never stop working to isolate, delegitimize, and weaken Israel. In the face of evil, Christians must not remain silent. Supporting Israel is not a political issue, it is a biblical issue. And you can make a difference in your church, on college campuses, and on Capitol Hill. In 10 years, You've gathered more than 3 million members and are active on more than 300 college campuses. Kufi never shies away from standing with Israel, from standing with the truth. Become part of the largest pro-Israel organization in America and help Christians United for Israel push back against the darkness as a beacon of truth. Join over 3 million defenders of Israel when you visit our website at cufi.org and sign the Israel Pledge. Together, we'll make sure that Israel never stands alone. And welcome back to The Watchman from TBN's amazing 
Jerusalem studio. Well, I first met Chrysandra Brunson at KUFI's 11th Annual Washington Summit this past summer in D.C., and right away, I was struck by her energy, her passion, and her spirit. Chrysandra runs a great organization called The Calling that's helping people to fulfill their dreams in the Lord. She's also got a major heart for this land, the land of Israel, and I sat down with her recently to talk about how her trip here with Christians United for Israel's Israel Collective recently changed her life and profoundly impacted her calling. Take a look. When I least expected it, one day I was walking in the middle of a passing period. The Holy Spirit just stopped me. He literally physically stopped me and he said, Cassandra, so many of my children are afraid to go after the things I'm calling them to. Tell them not to be afraid. And so ever since then, this vision dropped to my heart to tell people all around the world to not be afraid. We do that through lots of different activities from speaking engagements and workshops and just challenging people individually to look inside their hearts at and asking the question, what would you do if you knew you could not fail? and be able to be released into their potential from that question. Um, so that's one-on-one, -on -one, but also global conferences. So we love bringing communities and nations together to be able to activate their individual purpose. So to hear from um, people that they really respect, so bands and speakers and performers, hear this message of empowerment and inspiration that comes from the gospel of Jesus Christ, and then be able to activate it right then and there. My dad actually had traveled over to Israel, so there had been a lot of seeds planted in my heart of how special it would be to go sooner than later. I will say, for even flying um, over the land beginning to get over there, you feel the holiness and the sacredness of the land as well. And you just know that Jesus has such a huge plan for not only the people that are living there, but all of us as his children all around the globe. And that it's like a home. <laughs> so landing, we started out and we went to King Herod's palace and to the amphitheater Caesarea that's right there. And that was very near and dear to my heart um, because of the background with the calling and holding conferences and most of them being at amphitheaters. So that was so special. Um, but just getting to know the people and um, you know, these traditions of Shabbat and being able to see that it goes back to um, the Bible and the traditions that they set up so long ago. The biggest melting pot there is in the whole world. It's not New York, it's not um, Tokyo or Sydney, Australia. It is Israel. You see everybody there and it's because the Holy Spirit is drawing people from all around the globe um, to be part, be part of His plan. And so it was from physically being there that I was forever changed. Israel Collective, the time together, blew my mind and um, my heart away every single second that we were on that trip. So with being in Israel, um, it hit my heart just of the holiness and the innovation that are central to the makeup of this holy land. And it's almost like heaven on earth. Um, because in heaven we're going to be able, we're going to be working every single day, but we're going to be in our sweet spot. And that's what the calling's aiming for, as well as for people to be in their sweet spot. So Israel um, and just the nation, there are, it's a prime example of people living out their calling. So we want to be able to bring their leadership and their innovations um, globally. And we're just thrilled to be able to partner with God's nation. Coming up, bless Israel and be blessed. Find out how after the break. It's the Watchman, it's Kufi, coming to you from TBN's Jerusalem studio. Stick around. The Bible is clear. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob made an everlasting covenant with the land and the people of Israel. They are the apple of his eye. But Israel faces enemies on all sides who want to annihilate every Jewish man, woman, and child. God gave us a voice and a responsibility, a biblical mandate to bless Israel and to speak up for Zion's sake. Find out how when you order my free book, Why Christians Should Support Israel. You'll learn 
why Israel has a biblical and historic claim to the land, why Christians owe the Jewish people a spiritual debt, what the Bible says about those who bless and curse the Jewish people. There's no time to lose. Call Christians United for Israel at the number on your screen or go to cufi.org slash book and we'll send you your free book from Pastor John Hagee. If you won't speak up for Israel, who will? And welcome back to The Watchman from TBN's Jerusalem studio. Well, at the top of the show, we told you about the high holidays, how Israel and the Jewish people have just entered a brand new year. Well, another holiday, Passover, contains a very significant saying every year. The Jewish people, when they gather at their Passover Seder, say, next year in Jerusalem. Well, guess what? The Jewish people are back in this glorious city. And in the book of Psalms, we're told to pray for the peace of Jerusalem, that those who love this great city will prosper. Folks, that's one reason I believe that Christians United for Israel has prospered. Number one, we love this city, we love this land, we love the Jewish people, and we are blessing and comforting them every chance we get. And that's why God has taken this movement, given it legs, and we are off and running. 3.1 million members across the United States who are standing in the gap for Israel for such a time as this. You see the information on your screen? Visit cufi.org, that's kufi.org, or call the number and be a part of what God is up to right now. This, this land is what God is up to, and this is where he is moving, and you need to be a part of it for such a time as this. Well, thanks for joining us this week in beautiful Jerusalem. Until next time, God bless you, and remember, never hold your peace.